All right, Narab TV here, and we're back with another guide through Heroic Moonglade. This time, we are doing Starblaze and Omniron, the twin druids that, uh, one's a bear, one's a crow, and, uh, it's a pretty fun fight. This one definitely took me a few more attempts on each family to nail it down, and, uh, you'll see it actually took me a bit to realize that you... In normal, you could go right for Starblaze first, the um, the bear. Not as a uh, reliable strategy on Heroic. Seem taking out the crow first, and then using both sides to pincer uh, the bear was the way to go. Uh, but we'll start here with Dracoseth yet again. It is the exact same uh, build as I used for... Uh, what was it? Broomeran. And, uh, it's a death ball strategy. Uh, it, but I did need to adjust it over time. And this one took me a little bit longer than it probably needed to. So I'll go ahead and jump into it here. I'm using, uh, the same talents as before. Same build using Witch Doctor, uh, and, uh, Pyromancer to... Really take advantage of the elemental damage from uh, Dracoseth. Now, take note here, Starblaze, who turns into the bear, has ranged attacks, he, and he heals his partner, and he transforms into a powerful bear uh, at 50%, except that starts off on Heroic. He's a bear the whole time. Uh, being a bear the whole time is quite a problem because he bounces people away, um, making it pretty difficult to actually get in range, even for ranged uh, characters. And then you got Omniron. He has range attacks as well. Healing, he's not as much of a threat, um, and that's why it ends up making more sense to take him out. So I start off here trying to uh, take out the... Uh, getting in control of that uh, chest. And then that gets taken out. And now I got my death ball rolling. I'm going for the tower on the right first. So we're gonna try and take that tower. I'm getting attacked by uh, Moonkin. But I'll use another safe pilot to take that out. And as you can see, the death ball Nothing stops the Death Ball. Death Ball's about to take full control of the uh, the right tower. And I believe I'm going to get my economy and Kobold going up middle. Probably should have saved him to go left after I took control, but now I got my next Death Ball going left. And as you see, there, that bounce back from Omniron, or I'm sorry, Starblaze, is very hard to deal with, especially when he gets range units like that on him. I'm going to get a few chips in, but not really enough to do anything meaningful. And this is when I learn I'm going to have to change up my strategy. Well, I learned it in a little bit. Seems I'm, I'm being stubborn in it. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I could take it out. Not really. Because he just keeps bouncing them. And you need to attack from both sides because of the bounce. And that is me not directing your arrow to the top. I went in the middle by accident. Really, the ideal play there was make sure I'm going right up there. Try and change that early in uh, the fight, early when the match starts, because I always forget to change it if I don't do it right away. Alright. Birds are going to take him out. Like I said, I think this match I didn't quite figure it out, but all the uh, other families going forward, I kind of figured out, oh, the other guy is way easier to take out first. But we'll keep on chunking. The nice thing, especially with Dracoseth Death Ball, is you can kind of brute force things if you can survive to overtime, which I believe this fight goes to overtime, and that's how I'm able to get through it on, on this attempt. You know, the bounce is just too strong. You can't really attack from one side on him. You really need both. There's my miner, helping with the economy, and now I'm finally pushing up on left. If I had done this literally two minutes ago, we'd probably already be done. 
get the death ball set up. That is one thing I struggle with is realizing when to play him because I ideally it works best when they're all next to each other. But due to the gold income, it's not always lining up to be at the exact same time. But he has range attacks, more of like a balanced druid. Uh, but he doesn't bounce back, and because he doesn't bounce back, we can chip him down. He is vulnerable, more so than his uh, Starblaze brother. Once the Pyromancer gets us in there, he's gonna blow up. He's gonna turn into the Crow. And we're gonna take the Crow out. And now we have both sides under control. With both sides, you're just gonna- you can send a tank unit on either side and then choose a side to uh, launch your attacks from. Yep. It's gonna keep flip-flopping. But, at this point, it's he's gonna be overwhelmed and chipped down because he's not getting healed by his brother anymore, either. Checking damage. I think that safe pilot's gonna finish it. There it is. Like I said, Drakasath is kind of playing on easy mode. It, the death ball is just so good. Um, then I do another death ball here, but I have learned my lesson that going left is better. This is, once again, the exact same build as I use for Broomeron. Uh, I will say using... Uh, the Defias uh, bandits and using their lockpick for the extra gold a lot better here because there are um, what are they called the little uh, chests to take advantage of but it's the exact same build your uh, your quill board is going to be used to distract you got um, a ton of range to hopefully chip in uh, and you got your Tyrion that's going to be taking the brunt of damage so pretty straightforward strat, but just taking over left. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned. The other aspect here is they both enrage now with Heroic. They are, as you see, that's why they're red. They start off enraged, uh, whereas in uh, normal, they don't do that. So I'm getting a pretty heavy attack on the left, even though that's where I want to go. Kind of sucks, so that's why I was hesitating to decide what to play. But I waited to get the right economy going, so I'm not just sacking things. And now everything's still alive. And I can start sending stuff that way. In the meantime, I'm going to get my other... Because I do want both towers. But I'm sending my other Tyrion to go get the other tower. And I think... Yep, I just... He kills me, but I kill him. That's right. Got a bog monster over there. But he's focused on Tyrion while my uh, Witch Doctor can just go uncontested. Which is really great. Tyrion's shield uh, talent that uh, that prevents death. I forget the name of it offhand. I'm bad with names. I'm good at describing them. But uh, it's just, it's definitely the best talent for him. And it really makes him probably the best tank in the game. Cairn's really good too because of his rebirth. Rian, uh, his Ankh. But definitely both are strong contenders. So I'm, I'm trying to chip a little bit on... Starblaze, but the bulk of my attack is going on the left. I have full control of the middle, full control of economy, so I just can keep playing anything I want. I also got the middle with uh, the bandits, which is even better. And the crow is almost dead. Nice thing with the crow. Now, it is flying, but it doesn't react like normal flyers. If you watch, you see I am able to hit him with my, uh, my Tyrion. Get some, some swipes in. And there it goes. Can't hit the harpies, obviously, so I'm going to use the the uh, witch doctor to take that out. And now I have full control of both sides, and it's like a minute and a half faster than I did last game. And I think Drac is probably the stronger death ball that if I had done it the right way from the start, I would have had been done with it a lot sooner. So... Keep up the economy. I always make sure to, even as the fight gets near the end, to not forget to keep managing that economy because if you, even if you don't need uh, the resources, you don't want the other team, your opposition, to get them. 
and get an upper hand just as you're about to win. So even if it's it helps you, but it's more to it's more about preventing them from getting it. And there we go. Last push getting in. That bog monster's going down. The Dark Spears ain't got a prayer. I should have another Tyrion up here in a second. Yep. Double Tyrion. Hard to stop that. Yep, Witch Doctor. Ah, and then this was the fight where I discovered. So see how he bounces across? He will chase minis across the map. He kept bouncing my Tyrions back and forth. And it baited it close to my uh, my uh, tower, and the tower got some great chip damage. If it wasn't for the tower chip damage, I wouldn't have killed it that fast. So keep that in mind. You can bait him towards towers for damage. That right tower is going to be the easier one, obviously, to get him to. All right, and so in the for the Horde family, I went with Gromash again, but I did swap out the Vultures. I Definitely felt like the vultures would just get nuked by the Alkin, the Moonkin. But I realized great time to reintroduce the Defias Bandits. Everything else is the same the, from Broomeron. I got your safe pilot for good stealth damage and splash damage. The uh, Witch Doctor plus uh, all the other little guys is great for the extra shielding. Just keeping things alive longer. And Dark Spear, great range unit. Um, just pairs really well with Gromash because of the uh, Enrage. And still using Gromash's uh, Mirror Image talent for more of a distraction. I'd say on this fight, it works a lot better than it did on Broom Run. So we'll jump on in here and see how this one played out. Again, by this time, I kind of figured out that going left first was the play. But every time you start is a little bit different in who you get. This time, they keep sending really strong units down the middle, meaning I can't really secure early economy and they get an early head start. As you see, they pop the bog monster right on top of me before I get the tower, but I secure the tower. Now, the problem is those two together, one is really good against range and one is really good against flyers. I don't have any great answers, but I'm able to use uh, my quill bore there to at least distract for a little bit until I get another Gromash out. Getting the Gromash shot to finish it off. And now I got a nice little push on the right tower. Um, haven't made a big dent on Omniron, but I've established control on the left side and don't have any threats there right now, which is great. And I now have control of both towers. I can now start planning economy to get the middle. Not using my uh, little Defy Bandits in the middle, but that's because I just wanted to prevent anyone on the other team from getting it. Way more important, even though getting four would be great, two to me and zero to the other team is way better to secure. And now I'm popping all of my big stuff on top of Omniron. You do have his brother coming in to help, but he if things are far enough to the left, he doesn't come in. And already we've murked uh, Omniron, and we're like half a second ahead from where we were last time. Now those uh, rangers, the huntresses, uh, are going to be kind of annoying, but Gromash is a great counter for the Huntresses, so I try and save him for that. Um, he's also pretty good against um, the uh, the Ramming Torrin. What is it? The Ramming Torrin's name? It just took out so many of my little things. But that's where the Griffin Rider is great. So now I'm just waiting for Economy to come back and got my little uh, Kobold coming up soon so I can control economy, and then have a final strong push. Managed to not lose the tower, which is good. I think I... You no, know, he doesn't... The healing talent. The healing talent on Dark Spear Thrower is just... Can't be beat. Gonna try and blow up the uh, Huntress there. Kind of nicked her, but would have liked more damage on her. That's alright, though. We're still in a strong position. I'll lose the Kobold. Not too big of a deal. Great time for Gromash. If I played him a little bit sooner, I could have prevented uh, the steal on the resources. And get my flyer ready to hopefully take out the Stonehoof. That's right, it's the Stonehoof Torrin. I'll lose him, that's fine. I'm going to get the economy with the Kobold on the left, which is great. 
And it's just dealing with these chunky enemies that I keep getting thrown with. I would say Gromash, he does a quick bursty damage, but deals with uh, those sort of threats not as well as the last two, Tyrion and Dracoseth. But I do feel like, compared to the elemental damage that Sneed is vulnerable against, Sneed is not as good of a pick. I think Karen would be pretty good here. I just didn't try it with Karen. I might go back and try it. Um, but getting close to the final push. He's getting bounced back. I'm so close to just killing it. Honestly, all I need is one more well-placed uh, safe pilot. And I believe this is, the, this is it. That does the damage. Sweet. So a little bit more dynamic. All right. Now for the undead faction. Uh, instead of Sylvanas, we're using our old Baron Rivendare. Uh, big fan of... I've discovered in the recent uh, PvP season his talent that consumes a skeleton to heal. So you can use that skeleton party that I have uh, slotted up there uh, with... I forget the name of the talent, but it's the one that gives you a tank, um, a regular fighting one, and then a stealthy one. And they all kind of work together to support each other. Um, and it's just really cheap. And you can use it as fodder to heal and support Baron Rivendare, as well as his own marching uh, marching uh, skeletons that spawn from each base. Um, I also use uh, the fast, uh, fast talented uh, Gargoyle. He's just quick, quick siege damage on the bosses. Uh, he also helps for quick takes on the uh, on the towers. Using Defias again because of that one uh, treasure chest and for helping to stun uh, tanky enemies and your other usual suspects, Safe Pilot, Griffin, and uh, Witch Doctor with the same talents. So similar strategy, honestly, as with Gromash, is get control of both sides burn down uh, your Omniron, and then uh, pincer attack uh, Starblaze. This time I'm getting the attack on the left. Unfortunately, right after I spawned the uh, Gargoyle, they spawned uh, the Harpies, but I think I either got close or almost took out, yeah, almost took out the uh, left side. Sending him up the middle. Honestly, I think I meant to make him go right, but I forgot to hit the, the switch on the trigger. I already got another Gargoyle. He's going to easily take out the other one because they've already spent so much resources. I'm going to lose the Baron. I don't think I... Yep, I don't get a uh, another uh, party out fast enough to heal him. Or do I? No, I do. Just in time. Look at that. That was just fast enough to heal him up. And he's going to finish off that group. Now, granted, uh, Starblaze will, will merc him. But look at that tank damage, that siege damage being done to Omniron. Now, it's not enough to finish him, but it's enough to draw attention from the other threats and let my big guy get in there. He heals again with one of the uh, skeletons that was there, and Omniron's almost down. Now, granted, I haven't made any progress on the right, and that's why I sent the Gargoyle that way. want to get that under control so I can pincer on Starblaze. And I'm pop. That's another great use for a skeleton party here. Is trying to control nodes like that, so I get the economy. It's not with the um, the Defias uh, bandits, but again, preventing the other team from getting the resources, which is way more important. Sometimes you got to make those compromises. Sending the bandits up just so they can help help stun the uh, Albies when it gets there. I would normally be concerned about the Huntress, but it's already at half health. Took out most of it already. And that safe pilot will finish off Omniron. Now I can start setting up for the final push on Starblaze. But they are doing a pretty strong push on the left tower, and I think I need to defend that first. Love uh, Witch Doctor as a counter to Harpies. Usually, you do need to make sure that the Harpies have either taken a little bit of damage that there's a level advantage of some kind, or that you have a small tank to take some of the hits, because if it's all three raw, you're probably going to lose uh, lose them either at the end of it or near the end of it. Old Stonehoof loves to attack my ranged. But at this point, I have full control of the board. I have two tanks out in the form of Baron Rivendare and Gargoyle, both getting yeeted, but they're tanking damage while that Witch Doctor can just channel uncontested. 
almost dragged him at the wrong time, so he would have gotten killed, but luckily I remembered with the Kobold and held off. Just free, free real estate. And throwing in yet another Gargoyle. Ignoring the Huntress, I'm taking damage, but that's just tank damage that I can eat right now. I can afford it. And plenty of support for my Baron. I do have those Harpies to worry about, but can't forget the economy. Got the Kobold on the left. Pick them off. And at this point, about to hit overtime, so everything's going to move a little faster. But I got the safe pilot and my Baron chipping damage. Gargoyle just does so well, too. Kind of baiting it back this way, but it's not falling for it as well as it did with uh, Gromash. Safe Pilot's explosion does so much good damage, and that'll finish it. Now, the last one is Beast Family. Once again, I think Charlga's gr uh, Charlga is a great fit. I don't think I modified this at all from uh, Boomeron. Um, you got your strong ranged. I, did, I do have the Harpies here. Uh, mainly uh, for when I'm able to pull distraction on Starblaze, and they can come in from the other side, taking out the bog monsters, and also whenever a big threat is distracted by a tank. So Huntress, um, Stonehoof, it's a great counter for Stonehoof, and I've been running into issues with Stonehoof, and uh, the Owl Beast whenever they're distracted. Everything else you've seen, I've talked about. We have uh, Polymorph. Well, I guess I don't know if I talked about Polymorph for this video. Polymorph is great with the gold, so it's economy as well as control. You get you get refunded one essentially if you kill the golden golden sheep. But it's just great control and it's not expensive, uh, which is what this Charlga deck is all about. Um, no Huntress in this one. I think I used Huntress in the la in the one on Broomeron, but I swapped in. Uh, Dark Spear, just because I think it, it performs way better on this map. So jump on in and finish it off. I think this one actually went pretty fast. I don't think this one was as long as some of the other ones. So, uncontested with the middle. I gave up on trying to get, or, or on the left rather. Middle is taken. I, I, I take the L on the loss. Now, Charger's great here for enemies like Stonehoof, which is why I have her going that way. And luckily I sheep just in time before I lost my Charga. Charga will die here soon. But look at that. Three huge threats and two of them are, are done. And the other one that's the lesser of the threat is almost almost done. And I'm setting up to take the right tower. And I'm already set up to go left, which is where I want. Now, I got those big guys coming in. They are going to do significant damage, but just set them up to start chipping. And I got my Harpies, which are the perfect counter to both of those. So, shouldn't lose the tower. Or if I do, I'm set up to retake it immediately. Throw in my safe pilot to make sure I get the gold, as well as the Kobold to get the gold. And as you see, I already chipped a ton of damage on Omniron. Took it, took them out, but I've already done very significant damage, and I got my uh, dark spear heading back up there to finish the job. Got my range going up there with the murlocs as well. Luckily, Mer uh, he isn't he wasn't distracted by the bog monster, and that should finish it with her big blast. So now I got both sides under control in basically a minute. About a, yeah, about a minute, minute and a half. I missed play there on the Kobold. Played it too soon. Always watch before you drop your Kobolds. And that's me using Charga to control her. And the Spear under control. At this point, judging by nothing coming out immediately, they are in economy deficit, so I just got to keep that economy control. Almost lose a tower here, but chip, chip the Huntress just in time. And I'm about to be set up to get all of my economy rolling again. I'm trying to think. Maybe instead of 
if you were trying to switch things up, I think a viable option would be Dark, uh, Dark, Dark Iron Miner because of how much gold there is to control. As you see here, I am leaving a lot of gold just sitting up right now, and I hate doing that. I just, it's not efficient. Ah, oh, that's right. They turned it at the last minute. And I lost... Now, if I had done better to get that economy and not lose the right tower, this, this fight would already be over. But, lessons learned. And I just managed to do that before losing. Losing the whole squad. You know, replay, looking back here, I definitely messed up by not... I should have played my Cobalt by now. Gotta get it out, gotta start getting that economy. Falling behind a little bit too much. But, the Huntress is set up, meaning I can pop Harpies without risk, and I'll take both of them out. And the Harpies will go up and finish the tower, because I got a tank in play. Safe pilot will take out that annoying uh, Dark Spear. Even the enemy knows how good the Dark Spear is. And I got my Kobold going up for that other gold as well. And of course, he's popping all the stone hoof is popping all my shit. And that's what the harpies are for. They were built for this. And luckily, the I placed it just in time where the owl beast did not nuke my harpies. And I am able to regain control and keep chipping away at Omniron. Those choice uh, drops of safe pilot, I think, did a lot of work on this fight. Um, Alright, I was wrong. This fight went longer than I thought. And it went down kind of to the wire. But, like I said, safe pilot is your friend, especially in the end stages. The extra damage, the explosion damage, being uh, definitely, I mean, you could use burn. I think I get more uh, benefit out of stealth here by being able to uh, safely, uh, safe, safely pick off damage. Yeah, that one went longer than I thought. Never mind, that was the longest of all of them. I think if I didn't lose the uh, the right side when I did, and if I had better economy management in that one, it would have been sealed a little bit sooner. But anyway, that is all five families for heroic... What are these guys' names? Starblaze and Omniron, the Druid twins. I at least assume they're twins. Anyway... I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun uh, learning these fights, and I have uh, more in the works. I think I just finished filming for Brightwing, so I'll be posting that ASAP. Thank you for the support. If you like what you saw, if you have comments, if you want to tell me how bad I am, throw that down in the comments. But if you want to follow for more uh, WoW, Warcraft Rumble, Hearthstone, anything like that, I cover it. Be sure to drop a uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. But with all that said, okay, peace, bye.